Hello and welcome back to the Azure Terraformer. Today I'm going to be giving a tour of the GitHub ATAT. We're going to go through the module and I'll use a variant of the module that uses the client secret. In the next episode, I'll show you how to use the OpenID Connect variant that I just recently developed. So without further ado, let's drop into the code. So as you can see, um, the repo is structured in such a way that I have multiple modules. This is a multi-module repo. These are each individual reusable modules that are loosely coupled that can be used together or independently. I've organized them into a couple of different folders based on what the module is provisioning. Let's start with the backend. The backend is going to configure environment variables for a given Azure RM backend. These are well-known environment variables that the GitHub Action workflows that I use reference. So there is a bit of a convention followed in terms of the defaults for the environment variable names. In this case, I'm using a storage account. So we're using a backend resource group name, a backend storage account name, and then a backend storage container name to help triangulate where we're going to be storing state files on Azure storage. I've structured this into a, a, some nested folders to allow myself to add additional backends if I so chose in the future. Moving on, we have code base modules. These code base modules essentially provision files to my GitHub repository. And uh, the, the files are basically referenced in the code here. And you can see I'm using a T4 extension to indicate that it's a templated file and that is not actually part of this code repo. Um, Terraform docs gets a little bit confused when, it's, when it recursively scans the directories to create documentation. Adding these T4 extensions kind of help me isolate these files and say, these aren't actually part of this solution. These are, these are part of a template that's embedded within the solution. But the application environment code base is going to provision a baseline Azure Terraform configuration environment. Um, you can see here, it's just gonna be provisioning a resource group using a, my standard naming convention, application name, environment name, and a random string. There's a default TFR file. There's some input variables, which I could probably enhance uh, to make them a little bit better. Um, and then there's uh, some versions here. Now, I could probably open an issue to templatize this value so that it is something that you could configure as part of this file. And, you know, I might, I might be able to templatize some of the features that we enable or don't enable within the Azure M provider block. Um, that might be interesting, uh, but right now it's pretty, pretty much just meat and potatoes. So basically this, the, the modules in this folder are intended to essentially drop a certain collection of opinionated files within a GitHub repo. Um, and the, the application environment drops files that's going to provision a baseline Terraform code base. Um, I could, I could enhance these code bases to um, add custom templates that could drop like uh, an Azure function um, code base um, or whatever concoction I might, I might think up. But this is just a very basic one. The next uh, type, I'm going to skip over the module library stuff because that I haven't fully implemented that or tested that yet. Um, the next one is the credential. And you can see here I have two versions of this module. One is for when we, you know, set up uh, a service principle with secret-based authentication. And then another one is with OpenID Connect. Uh, basically, the idea is like, depending on the way that you want to authenticate uh, with Azure, you're going to use one of these two different modules and embed it within your code base um, in order to tie things together. Next, uh, we have the pipeline. Now, this is different than the code base, right? So. The code base were the actual files within, you know, the, the GitHub repository, similar to that in that they are going to be files that show up in the GitHub repo, but they are GitHub actions files. The manual targeting module, or actually I have two variants of this. Um, one is set up using uh, the service principle secret approach. And basically it follows a similar pattern to the code base modules. Um, in that it drops some files, but it's going to drop different files. And the files that it drops are GitHub Actions. This allows me to separate the concern of what is the actual Terraform code that I want to bundle and deploy 
versus what is the actual Terraform pipeline mechanism um, or Git flow process do I want to embed within this repo that I deploy? So the idea is that I could continue to enhance like what different pipeline configurations there are and I can continue to enhance like the different code bases that I want to drop uh, and uh, I can kind of pick and choose between the, the, vari the variants within these, uh, within these module categories which ones that I want to deploy. So this one just drops a very simple uh, manually triggered Terraform plan apply and destroy pipeline. Um, it's not super sophisticated, but you know I'm trying I'm trying to get I'm trying to get these things uh, going so that like I can continue to enhance them and add a, add the features that I want. Um, but I just I'm trying to make it easier and easier to use. Um, so the first the first feature that I've added um, is you know the addition of this Open ID Connect uh, variation, um, but uh, more to come, more to come. So these I mean these these basically get dropped and they're coded in such a way that they tick and tie with a corresponding backend, um, you know the Azure Blob Storage backend, right? So. Um, there's, they're very opinionated, right? Like we, we are looking for environment variables that are provisioned by this backend module, this blob, blob storage backend module. So there's, you know, a dependency in this module, um, the manual targeting module to be dependent on the backend Azure blob storage module. They're intended to be provisioned together, to work well together because we're assuming certain things are there that are going to be provisioned by that blob storage module. Likewise, we are dependent on the Azure credential, the service principle secret module, because we are basically looking for these environment variables that have been set up for us. There is, uh, you know, they, they don't necessarily have to be used together. Um, like you can go as, as long as you drop, you know, these, uh, you know, these environment variables, um, such that they're available to this, uh, GitHub actions workflow, then you'll be fine. Uh, so in that sense, they're kind of loosely coupled in that they're not bundled together, but, um, there, there is a, uh, a dotted line dependency between them. So lastly, we have the repository modules and the repository module is pretty much, you know, the entry point into the GitHub ATAT you are going to be provisioning um, a whole new Git repository, I guess GitHub repository. Um, and so inside here, you can see that we have, uh, the, you know, we're referencing the code base module, a very specific code base module, one that works you know, with the, the variant of the module that we're using. And we are setting up environments. So you can see here, we're setting up GitHub repository environments that map to inputs that we take in for this module. We are setting up some of our own environment variables here, such as the Terraform version that we want to use, the environment name, because that kind of keys off of the input variable itself, um, and then the Terraform working directory, because that, that might be uh, something that we want to change uh, based on uh, our preferences. And for each environment, we are going to be creating an Azure credential. The Azure credential assumes we already know what the client ID and the client secret are because they've been created outside of this module. And when I show you the example module for this, you'll understand why that's the case. So basically for every environment, we have a different credential. That means that dev is going to authenticate with a different credential than the prod environment is going to authenticate with. This allows us to kind of have a security blast radius or security boundary around the dev and prod environments. Um, likewise, we can also deploy dev and prod into different subscriptions entirely. Again, in alignment with the security boundary that that different identity has. We can grant the dev service principle only access to the dev subscription and the prod service principle only access to the prod subscription. Likewise, we have uh, a different backend for each environment. Um, and so basically we are going to be having a different storage account probably hosted in a different subscription. Like if we have a dev subscription, we're probably going to have 
a storage account for the Terraform state in that subscription that our dev service principal has access to. And likewise with uh, production. So for each environment, we set up a service principal and a storage account, and we grant that service principal access to that storage account so that it can execute Terraform and save state to that location. This is all driven off of this input variable called environments. And if we go look here, um, the environments input variable takes, it's, it is a complex object. It takes all the usual suspects for the Azure authentication, and it has a backend object that takes the usual suspects for a storage account backend. So when I show you the example and how this works, um, you'll be able to see how we structure this object to, to pass it in. So that's it. Anyways, I hope you found that useful. Um, just an anatomy lesson on the GitHub ATAT, uh, the client secret version, before we get into um, uh, the demo, uh, which is coming up next episode. Um, and then after that, um, I'll show you what's different about the OpenID Connect version and give a demo on that too. So stay tuned. If you are enjoying this content, please smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps out a lot. Turns out only about 25.4% of you Azure Terraformers out there are actually subscribed. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe today. Really appreciate it. This is the Azure Terraformer, signing off.